We are in my dining room today because I am creating a ton of DIYs that fit around the Christmas baking, gingerbread men, hot cocoa theme to deck out the space for Christmas. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor, tips, tricks, and tutorials all around getting a DIY home that you love. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. Also a huge thank you to Ana Luisa Jewelry for partnering with me on today's video. We will talk more about them and the gorgeous pieces I'm wearing today in just a little bit, but first let's get into the DIYs. We're gonna kick things off with these super quick and easy faux gingerbread cookies. And they're really simple ingredients you can get at Dollar Tree. The ingredients are super simple, flour, salt, cinnamon, and I decided to add a little vanilla extract. Two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and a quarter cup of cinnamon go into a bowl, mix it up, and it is kid friendly. Are you mixing up those cookies? Then add your water. I did about three quarters of a cup of water in a container and then slowly added it in sections just so then that way you don't end up with a soupy pile of muck if you add too much water. So I add some, slowly kind of fold it in as you're seeing here and you're going for this type of consistency. You want it to look like a cookie dough so you can roll it out and work with it. This is the point that I added my vanilla extract. You can also add it when you're mixing the water in, but I wasn't sure how that was gonna work, so I just decided to wait till the end. Again, that part is optional. Then take some cinnamon. I'm using Dollar Tree cinnamon, so it's not a huge deal that I'm dumping a ton on my counter. And that is so your dough won't stick. If you use flour, you're gonna get white specks everywhere and it's gonna look terrible. Then you want to add a little bit of cinnamon to your rolling pin, roll it out, and then I decided to use cookie cutters and just a butter knife to cut out some houses. I did snowflakes, gingerbread men, trees. All of these cookie cutters came from Target this year for a dollar, and I added them to a parchment lined baking sheet to go in the oven. If you want these to be ornaments, you're gonna wanna make sure that before you bake them and dry them out, you're gonna take a straw or something and create a hole. Then crank your oven down, cause we're gonna go low and slow at 250. Put your pans into the oven so that they can start the drying process. I start with 45 minutes and then add 20 minutes after that. You don't wanna go too far down the path because then they will lighten up too far and they won't look good. So take it chunk by chunk. Once your first side is mostly dry, flip them over and do the same process again. Start with 45 minutes and go from there. Then when they were all cool to do the faux icing, I really like using this puffy paint. I grabbed it from Amazon and it makes it really easy to decorate. Now obviously this is sped up because you don't want to sit here for hours and watch me decorate these, but I just pulled up a Google image of some different houses and kind of took elements that I liked and recreated them. I am not a good cookie icer, but this seemed pretty straightforward and easy to me and I really liked the result. After I decorated all my different shapes, I made sure that I gave them a few hours to dry so they weren't tacky. And then they're ready to go to be used all season long. And the great thing is they make your house smell amazing. I decided to use the ornaments that I made to put up on our tree that I will be unveiling at the end of this video. We'll be making a lot of different things for my gingerbread tree. Another way to use these cookies are as embellishments. When I shared these originally on my Instagram, I laid the cookies on top of a wreath and I looked at that picture and decided, why can't I make it into a wreath? So I decided to just make a simple hoop wreath here with two picks that I got from Hobby Lobby on sale. They ended up being about three bucks each. And I'm taking one of these 3D wreath form pieces from Dollar Tree that I just had laying around, but you could use a hoop. You can use really anything that is round that you can hook your picks to. To hook them to the base, I'm taking some jute twine and just wrapping it around both the pick and the circle. The great thing about these picks that I found is that they tend to bend really nicely and stay. So that's gonna give you your nice round shape. Once everything was hooked, I just took some more jute twine around the bottom to wrap it and give it that kind of covered natural look. If you have any pieces up towards the top that are kind of going kittywampus or haywire, just take a little bit more jute twine and tie your pieces there individually and it's going to give that circular feel to the wreath. But it's pretty simple and you can use as much or as little twine, but I like it because it blends in with the picks and you don't have to use hot glue or anything, it'll stay. Then when I had my wreath form done, I just took some hot glue on the back. I'm using my Gorilla Glue glue sticks, which I will link down below. They are my favorite. They hold really well. I get them at Walmart. I just used snowflakes and houses, but you could use whatever shapes work for you. And I decided to add just a little bit of candy cane ribbon from Hobby Lobby to tie it into the theme of the room. 
This makes such a statement over the top of our coffee bar cart and it was really inexpensive and easy to make. You could definitely use Dollar Tree greenery and make this entire thing a Dollar Tree wreath. The picks I got from Hobby Lobby were $1.50 on sale, so pretty darn close. And this looks like something that I think Pottery Barn or West Elm would sell. And again, these will make your house smell so good. Up next is a TikTok inspired project. I wanted some cute little candies to go on my tiered tray. And I saw a guy on TikTok, I will link the original creator below, but he used a ice cube tray like this, but they were Mickey head pumpkins to create a little figurine thing. And I thought, why couldn't I do that with some Dollar Tree little candies? So I just took some Dollar Tree glue sticks, put them in my glue gun and filled up the individual pieces, made sure it was completely cool. And then I popped them out. I didn't put anything inside the silicone mold. You just want to make sure it's not plastic, it's silicone so that it doesn't all adhere, but they popped right out. I used a hobby knife to get rid of any of those extra little wispies. And then I painted the whole thing white to give myself a base. After the white dried, I took some light gray paint and did the two sides so that the cellophane kind of popped of the candy. And then I took some red chalk paint and just outlined the grooves of the little peppermint to get the little swirl shape. These were so easy to put together and they came together really fast. I'm hoping, hoping I can find a ice cube tray of the moose heads from Christmas Vacation so I can do something similar, fingers crossed. Those Christmas vacation DIYs are coming so, so soon, so be sure to be subscribed for that. But these are so cute and so nice to just kind of sprinkle in this tiered tray setup and look like cute little candies. I would recommend though not using any like really high-end candy mold or anything because you are putting the hot glue in there and it kind of left a little bit of a residue. But for me, that $1 tray worked perfect. If you saw my last video, you saw this really cute Santa tray that I made for Finn to use on Christmas Eve, and I wanted to create this little staging bottle. So I grabbed my assistant and we headed to Dollar Tree, and we grabbed one of these latte bottles just for a dollar because I didn't want the grooved surfaces. An idea like this popped up on Pinterest by this creator, and I thought it was genius to use this bottle. I just dumped out the drink and then scraped off the label, used some glue gone, and then I added some paint with just a little bit of water. This is just regular white acrylic paint. The chalk paint would be too thick. So with the water, it's watered down. It gives it kind of that milky texture and I'm just rolling it around the bottle to get it to cover. Now I put painter's tape on the top to try to get like the poured milk look. It failed. So I just took a paper towel after I realized it was failing and just wiped it around the top to get that clean look. I added a Dollar Tree striped straw and this thing was ready to go. I did create this just to stage this tray, but I do really like how it turned out and I'm going to use it within my decor. So I figured if some of you guys like that idea as well, you could definitely recreate this super cheap and easy two bucks from Dollar Tree. Let's take a quick pause to talk about today's sponsor, Ana Luisa Jewelry. If you have been around on my channel, you have seen me wear their pieces and you've probably heard me talk about them before. They're actually the longest running partner that I have here at Whiskey & Wit. I started working with them in 2018. And the reason I continue to do so year after year is because of two huge reasons. One, their jewelry is high quality and I wear it every day. And two, their company is very dedicated to sustainability, which aligns with my values. They have a ton of beautiful bracelets, rings, earrings, all different types of jewelry on their website, and their metals are noble and recycled whenever possible. And they also make sure it's nickel free and hypoallergenic, which is huge to me because I sometimes have weird reactions to jewelry and I've never had that with their products. I also love the philosophy they have around piece design. They do it in small batches and they release new pieces each Friday. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt and it's awesome because they're always rotating new and exciting pieces in and out. They sent me three new pieces to add to my collection and I am so excited about that. One being these earrings. They also sent me a ring as well as this bracelet. I love that they are all classic and timeless and they go with my overall simple gold jewelry that I wear every day. These earrings have a gorgeous blue color to them and I plan to throw them on with just a sweater and jeans and look all put together. In addition to my wedding ring, I love having a simple ring on my right hand and so this ring is going to be perfect for that reason. This bracelet will be great as well. I like just having a little bit of something to pull everything all together. Right now as we head into the holidays, Ana Luisa is running a huge deal on their website, 20% off everything. So all the details that you'll need on that sale are down in the description. Now let's get back into the DIYs. 
This next set of projects is my favorite in the entire video and that is faux marshmallows. I had a friend send me a picture of some faux marshmallows that someone was selling and she asked if I could recreate them. I went on a hunt all over the internet and I finally found a tutorial video that I will link down below and that creator used Model Magic by Crayola. It is a kind of cross between a clay and a play-doh. I don't really know how to describe it. The best thing is it's made for kids and it will harden but it won't get all over your hands. So you're easily able to roll them into whatever shape. I decided to do a variety of sizes of marshmallows here. And I just did that by rolling a ball in between my hands first with the amount that I wanted. Obviously the more you take, the bigger your marshmallow is gonna be. I rolled it around in a circle and then I started to pinch the outsides to create kind of like a little dice shape. Rolled it some more. And then I just really kind of worked it in my hands to try to get it to look like a marshmallow. It was a pretty easy process. Then I laid them all out and let them dry overnight. And the nice thing is they will harden, but they will still be a little squishy. So you'll still get that marshmallow effect. To get the snowman face, grab a paint pen or paint marker. You could even use a Sharpie. And I did two dots for the eyes five dots for the mouth, and then I grabbed an orange one to create the cute little snowman nose. I found when I'm painting snowman faces or things of this nature, it's nice to pull up a reference photo. So I just Google it or pull it up on Pinterest and it helps me create this without having to think of how to draw it. Now I had a ton of ideas for the use of these and I ended up buying a four pack on Amazon. So I made all of them, but really for what I'm doing, you really only need one or two packs. I'll link it down below. Now for displaying. My first idea is to take this little Dollar Tree container. You can use any container that they have, but I like the fact that it is clear so you can see the cute little snowmen. I'm putting them in there around the outside with the faces facing the outside so you can see them and then adding some of the cute ones on top. Wrap it with some Baker's twine or if you don't want red and white, you could do jute twine. And then I added this cute little scoop. I got this years ago at the Target dollar spot and I drilled a hole in the top, but you can order things similar like this on Amazon or Hobby Lobby has them too. I tied it onto the jar and then took some hot glue with two of my teeny little marshmallows to put them on the scoop to finish off the look. And once that was done, I had a cute little jar of snowman marshmallows. This is cute for tiered trays as I'm using them, or this would be great for a hot cocoa bar. Idea number two is to take one of your snowmen and create a little bead garland. So I took some of this automotive twine from Dollar Tree and my doll needle. You guys have seen me use this a ton before. It's basically a six inch long needle that helps me string up garlands and beads and things. I'm just using unfinished and buffalo check beads that I got from Amazon to string them up, just an AB pattern here. And then I used my doll needle, went right through the center of my dried little marshmallow. It's still squishy, like I mentioned. Tie a knot at the bottom. And then once I got done stringing up everything, I just added a simple tassel to the end and that finished off the overall look. To create my tassel, I wrapped the twine around my hand about 50 times and then I tied it to the end of the strand. Tied some more jute twine around the top to create the head of the tassel and then trimmed all of those little loops at the bottom and gave it a quick haircut. I love doing different takes on bead garlands and adding little themed pieces to it. I also decided to do the black and white route here so that this can last well past Christmas. I sound like a broken record, but I really think that that is a great way to get more longevity out of your DIYs and decor purchases. I finally found a really cute way that I wanted to use my Target Dollar Spot gumbo machine. They also now have these at Hobby Lobby as well, but I got the white one. My mom found some of these a couple months ago and I've been waiting for the right project. I just started by stuffing the bottom with some of that wrapping paper that you get around stuff when you buy it at Marshalls or Home Goods, but you can stuff it with bags, tissue paper, whatever you have. I added a little bit of polyfill to cover that up and have the whole inside look white. And then I put about eight marshmallows all facing outward in my little gumball machine. 
I finished it off with some jute twine and a little bit of faux cedar that I had left over from another project to make it last a lot longer. I love this little guy and I'm going to put it up above my cabinets in my kitchen. If you can't find one of the gumball machines, you could also search for one of these cloches. These are plastic that the Target Dollar Spot has this year. And what I like to do with these to get my items to sit correctly is to put them in upside down. So here I'm putting my little snowmen with their heads facing the top, filling up the entire thing, putting the lid back on, and then giving the quick flip. So then that way most of the faces are facing the right way. It's not going to be perfect because you're not making everything in a fixed spot. However, it is a trick to get most of them going the right way. Now, if you like that look, but you're not a snowman person, I've got you. Here is another idea. I grabbed these really cute gingerbread faux ornament kits, and they're just little felt gingerbread men. So after I cut off the obnoxious tag that they had on them, I used two packs and just used some of the sticker felt pieces that they had. I wanted to stick with red and white, so I did red scarves and some Santa hats, as well as white buttons on some of them. And these little guys came with mouths on them, but not eyes. They wanted you to use the felt stickers, but I wanted to kind of do something a little less intense. So I just used a paint marker and dotted the eyes onto all of them. They turned out so cute and you can also turn them into ornaments because they have holes at the top. But I wanted to put them in one of these gumball machines so I did the same thing I did before, stuff the bottom because nobody's gonna see the bottom and why waste your decor? to fill up something nobody's gonna see. I put all of them around the top, making sure they were facing outward, and then tied a cute little bow with some wired candy cane ribbon around the bottom to give it a little color, and it was done. I recently picked up a $30 Walmart unlit flocked tree for our dining room because I wanted to do it on a budget and it had some holes in it. So I decided to make some large candies out of some of these pipe cleaners I got for $1.50 and these two packs of foam discs from Dollar Tree. I started by taking four pipe cleaners and just twisting the ends together. And then I started at one end and kind of spun it around to start to create my little spiral for my candy. Once I had that middle circle formed, I took some hot glue and stuck it to the styrofoam. And then I continued twisting on additional pipe cleaners and pushing it down on hot glue until I covered the entire piece. My last step was to cover it in some cellophane. So I just had a square piece of cellophane from Dollar Tree. If you can't find the roll, you can also grab one of the big bags and cut that up. I taped it to the back. I twisted the two sides with the extra cellophane, tied it up with baker's twine and trimmed the ends. Now these turned out so cute, you could put these in a vignette, but I decided to add them to my tree like I mentioned. So all you have to do is take your candy, find a hole, and just set it on the branches. You can bend the branches to create a kind of makeshift shelf, but because they're so light, you don't even need to have a hanger. You just kind of stick it in wherever it fits and where it fills the holes. I recently found these two packs of houses in the Target dollar spot. The white ones were on clearance from fall, so I got those for $1.50. And then the other houses were in the Christmas section for $5, and they kind of look like a makeshift advent calendar with little countdown houses, but I thought these would make really cute little gingerbread pieces. So I started by spray painting them with this satin spray paint. It's the color espresso, and I just made sure to give all of the edges a good coat and let them dry. When I brought them back in and they were dry, I just took a paint marker on the big ones and just traced where the doors and the windows already were. And then I also added some embellishments to make them look like gingerbread houses. I also did the same thing with my little houses. And once they were dry, they were ready to be added to vignettes or tiered trays. And I really like the size of these. They fit really well on my tray. And also these ones I got from Target have slits in the top. So they would be really cute to add a free printable that says hot cocoa bar or whatever. Strike your fancy. 
So as promised, I wanted to show you how I took all of these different items and styled my tiered tray. This particular tray is a new one I just got off of Amazon, which I will link down below. My other favorite is a hearth and hand one you've seen all the time, but I will link that too. It's still at Target. I like to start by anchoring with large items. Like here, I'm using mugs as well as my big snowman container. I'm balancing it out with additional things like the milk jug and then adding my little teeny pieces. I like to fill mugs with things like these Dollar Tree straws and spatulas. My little candies were perfect for fillers and I love my little rolling pins that I just made in a recent video. I filled out my hutch with these items that I DIY'd in my Ikea hacks video, which I will link down below for you. And I displayed my cookies in my Ikea cloche that I just DIY'd with my cute new Mickey mug from Kohl's. Like I mentioned, this tree was only 30 bucks unlit from Walmart. It is a six foot tree and I think for the price it is a great deal. The flocking is really pretty. I added ribbons and some other DIY ornaments that I have made already throughout the season, including my little candies that I shared, some ornaments from Hobby Lobby, and I also added some non-traditional things into the tree, like this little rolling pin I got in a set from Marshalls, and then I added a little crate with a blanket in the corner to display my cute little gingerbread man that I made. My last step was to fill in with my cute little Kirkland's dupe ornaments that I made in my last video and then I finished off the top with a spatula as the star. It's quirky but I like it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did putting it together. I loved creating DIYs to theme out my dining room for Christmas. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Whip video. And also all of the information that you need on Ana Luisa's 20% off sale is all down in the description. Huge thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.